Hello, my name is Daniil Trefilov and I want to present a work called Creation of Loopholes in Quantum Key Distribution Systems using High Power Pulsed Laser. Lists of authors and affiliations are also shown in the slide. Quantum communication protocols are considered secure, provided that all devices included in the system are fully characterized and side channels are closed. However, as a result of laser radiation exposure, it is possible to change quantum communication system's components characteristics that leading to vulnerabilities appearance in the quantum case distribution system. In this work, we consider the effect of pulsed laser radiation on fiber optic isolators used in quantum communication systems. According to the laser damage theory, Three mechanisms of laser-induced damage might be observed depending on a high-power laser oscillating mode. This includes heating, avalanche ionization, and multi-photon ionization. Here, we extend our study to quantum key distribution isolation components resilience against pulsed high-power lasers. In this study, we consider the influence of short pulsed laser radiation on fiber optic isolators. In our previous research, we demonstrated an attack using continuous wave laser. The main parameter that determines the isolation of a component is the Verdet constant, which describes the strength of the Faraday effect in a material and depends on external factors that are the temperature of the material and the wavelength of the transmitted radiation. Here you can see a typical view of the Verde constant versus influencing factors, obtained as a result of simulation for a magneto-optical yttrium iron garnet crystal inside an optical isolator. The given form of dependence is typical for all types of magneto-optical crystals that are used in fiber optic isolators. Here you can see the measured isolation factor of sample 1 versus wavelength. In the range shown, there is a significant decrease in the isolation factor from its maximum value at the operating wavelength. In the wavelength range of 1050 to 1280 nanometers, the attenuation is about 12 to 15 dB. In our work, we studied two samples of isolators, and for the second sample, a similar dependence was obtained with identical parameters. We have tested several samples of polarization-independent fiber optic isolators that are widely used in commercial QD systems. They provide losses of more than 50 dB to light propagating backwards in an isolator at 15-50 nanometers and thus protect the QQD source against light injection attacks. The experimental setup provided exposure of isolators to pulsed laser radiation with a pulse duration of several hundred picoseconds and a mean power up to 840 milliwatts in four different pulse generation modes. A high power laser at a wavelength of 1064 nanometers was of choice as it corresponds to the transparency window of the isolators and thus minimizes the heating of the component under test by absorption inside it. The isolation coefficient and insertion loss of tested samples were monitored using a laser diode with a wavelength of 1550 nm and average power of 10.50 mW. In addition, the sample's temperature was monitored using a thermocouple placed on the surface of the isolator. Here we show a summary of experimental results for two tested samples. The first sample was tested in all four pulsed laser regimes and was irreversibly destroyed while the second sample was tested in multi-pulse regime only. The minimum achieved isolation coefficient was 24.7 dB, while the device specification guaranteed 59.1 dB. We also show the observed change in insertion loss of the tested isolators. The maximum achieved insertion loss was 12.3 dB although a value of 0.2 dB was measured before the experiment for this sample. The experimentally observed isolation change is likely induced by optical damage than heating. 
because the temperature monitoring indicated that the isolator was within its operating temperature range. Moreover, contrary to the experimental results with a continuous wave high power laser, the isolation does not recover to its initial value after the end of the exposure. We remark that the isolators pass enough light at 1064 nanometers that may damage other components installed behind the last isolator in the QQD source. In summary, we show that loopholes in a QQD system might be induced by a variety of laser oscillating regimes. Our results can be used to prepare the standards for certification procedures for assessing the security of quantum communication systems.